Thinking about installing hardwood floors like only a woman can? Let's do it! I am installing unfinished red oak hardwood flooring and the first step is to make sure your sub flooring is ready. It means filling any gaps, removing nails that may be popping out and adjusting screws that are coming out. Once the sub floorings are ready, it's time for the underlayment. This process is fairly easy, it took me about 10 minutes total to cover the whole floor. Once done, it's time to start the layout. Honestly, one of the hardest parts is carrying all the wood planks into the room where you're placing them. So heavy. There's two important decisions that you have to make when installing hardwood floors. And one is in what direction are you going to run the wood? Um, meaning, are you running it parallel to the longest wall? Or are you running it the other way? Or are you going um, creative or running it diagonally, right? Like so, okay, floors and whatnot. So you have to make that decision. Um, I am going to run it lengthwise. Um, that is how the other rooms in the half hardwood are run. Well, at least the, the two behind me. This one is actually going in the opposite direction for some reason. But I've decided to go um, parallel to my windows essentially. That's how I'm going to run it. That's how I place it this way. And then you have to choose how, uh, where to start. Are you starting? Um, that wall, or are you starting on the other wall? There's a few things that you can keep in mind when making that decision. One is obstacles, like um, which way is it easier to get started? Um, is it, like for instance, there I have plumbing, so it means that my first row would have a gap if I do it there. On the other wall, I have nothing there; it's completely flat, so that really makes it a candidate for starting there. Another thing is if your room has some architectural elements, for instance, the columns in the middle or something like that, you might want to start from the middle. Um, if you want to align like a plank 
with some divisors that your um, room has or something like that. So it really depends on your room. In my case, I'm going to start um, from that wall because one, I have the plumbing there as I mentioned, and two, I'm gonna have cabinetry um, in most of that wall, which means that if it's not perfect or if the gap is slightly bigger, I don't care because it's gonna be completely covered. Note that this wall um, here faces like my foyer and the entrance of the house, so I really want it to be perfect. I'm gonna start there and we're gonna start by placing some pieces of wood and the hardwood floor has two sides to it. It has like a female and a male side. So your female side is where you insert the other piece of wood, right? Because they kind of click together. So I'm gonna start with this side towards the wall where I'm starting because what you do is you will put this align with the wall very straight and here you're gonna start by using finishing nails. You're gonna use that tongue or the male side to finish it um, or to nail it to the floor. And then once you have this in place, when you have the next piece of wood, you're gonna find a groove and they are gonna click together. And when your floor stapler is gonna push it together very tight and make it even straighter than it is. So that's kind of what we're gonna be doing um, for a while. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, so I need to figure out exactly where to start my flooring because I know I'm gonna be doing it parallel to this wall, so it will look something like this. I also know that it needs to be very straight and it needs to be at least half an inch away from the wall because you need to allow for the flooring to expand and contract. So you cannot put it like right on the on the wall, right? And that's what your baseboard is for. So. So I'm gonna like present it a little bit. Some pieces, particularly the longer ones, come a little bent or crooked. So I suggest that you either discard them or you leave them for pieces to be cut at the either end of your flooring. Otherwise, it'll be very hard to put them in place, particularly with the brat nailer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try as much as I can to line up my flooring with this thing that is already in place and this is like my divider between one and the other. And you can see how they did it here, see? There is a bit of a gap, so you will um, fill it up. You can fill up that gap and that's perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go as close as I can to that so that my joint is very um, small. And then I'm gonna push the, the flooring to be very straight there. But my gap is gonna be um, somewhat small, just like they did here, because there's already flooring next to it. But you have to leave a gap, right, between the, 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 the flooring, the walls and the flooring so that it can expand. And that's okay, because I will still have a little bit of space there. So, so what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna start doing a line. Once you have a basic layout, you're going to start installing the first three to four rows. Once you start using your stapler, that's going to help you a lot because the stapler pushes stuff. But the first few, you're going to have to do it with what you've got. And I love the rubber hammer. my compressor had the right one. So you're gonna take a little groove of the floor, 
and you're gonna cook a bradley nail right in the groove there at an angle. So just a pressure in the back. Once I realized that it was easier to use the Bradley nailer upside down, it truly really became much, much easier. It is still not an easy process because you have to fix every piece on your own, but it is much easier if you go upside down, then you actually reach your point you want to. Then it's time to install the rest of the floors. Make sure you assemble the machine correctly and that you use the right plate in the bottom of it for the right size of flooring. You don't need as much strength and it makes everything go very tight together to get 
the if you see there's a tiny gap there because I did that by hand with a hammer this one the pressure is so much that it just hammers the releases out of it and makes it very tight so it makes it look so much nicer already Whew. okay let's do it The staper does make it easier to close the gaps in between planks, particularly the one parallels to the wall. You do have to make sure that you close the gaps that are perpendicular, meaning the short side of the gaps yourself. It helps a lot to create a layout for five or six rows at a time, making sure you leave a space or a gap for the stapler to fit in, but that way you can concentrate on stapling. And when you're doing this layout, make sure that you're taking wood from different packages in case there's inconsistencies between one and the other because you want to have a uniform look across the room and you don't know that you can achieve that with multiple packages in specific areas of the room. There's a, right now I have a bit of a gap here in the seams. I'm gonna show you what the machine does for it. If you hit it right, let's see. Oop. Okay, so. because you have to close the gap on your own with your hammer and it was a pain. Um, but with this, it's much easier, it truly helps. Um, you don't have to hit the thing so hard at least, so it's fine. The only problem is the, the position does break your back. I'm not gonna lie, I'm very tired. So I made a bit of a mistake. I've been nailing from both sides, little by little. I didn't notice. I was nailing on the same row that I had already started there which means I was nailing on both sides 
and I have a gap in the middle. You're not supposed to nail from both sides. You're supposed to nail from one side to the other. I didn't realize that row was already nailed. It was a rookie mistake. And now I have this gap, which is not good. Thankfully, this goes under the island, but still. Ugh. Anyways, I just wanted to show you. Make sure you always nail in the same direction. Even if you nail a few things in a group, never nail the same row in both directions because then you end up with a gap. Then I kept stapling away as far as the machine would fit and for the last three or four rows I did have to use the brad nailer again following the same process that I used in the beginning. Fortunately I forgot to press record so I don't have a video of how I finished it. Hi! I just finished my kitchen floor. I'm so tired. Stay tuned to see how I stain and finish the floorings later.